Hey guys, I'm Chris Cooper. I'm the founder of Two Brain Business. And today I'm going to tell you why you need an on-ramp or another onboarding program to your fitness business. Whatever that fitness business is, an onboarding program will help you set up clients for success, avoid early churn or even injury, and keep them around long enough to actually change their lives. If this is helpful to you, please hit subscribe. You're also welcome to comment below this video or even better, join gymownersunited.com where we can chat about this in person. It's a free public Facebook group with over 6,000 other gym owners in there where we keep things light and positive and supported by evidence. Why you need an onboarding program. I'm gonna use an example as a CrossFit gym because that's where I was back in 2008 when I started learning about this stuff. And it's really important to CrossFit gyms right now because there are people who are saying, you don't need an on-ramp, just jump into group. These people mean well, but they just simply don't have the experience maybe or the data to understand what the actual value is of having an on-ramp program in your gym. So I'm gonna be saying CrossFit a lot, but if this applies to your gym, and if it's kickboxing or jujitsu or whatever, by all means, take the lesson anyway. So. When we started doing uh, CrossFit back in my gym, we were a bunch of early adopters. We had found it. We thought this looks kind of crazy. I won't say that we were bought in, but we were very CrossFit curious. And so we just tried it, you know, threw up and bought in, right? And uh, our, our early clients who were trying the program out were all personal training clients. They all had a good foundation in fitness. They all had a really good relationship with us. They'd been doing one-on-one. -on -one. They had good strength. They had good movement patterns. They had good mobility. And so when we started introducing higher intensity workouts, they loved it. And we said, okay, great. Well, this is working awesome. Like 12 out of 13 people to try this CrossFit program loved it. They're gonna keep doing it. Let's open up a second location. And at that second location, we followed the advice that was on the CrossFit message boards at the time. And that was just free trial, come and try a class. And what we found was that, oh, people didn't automatically love this. People were leaving and saying, I am bad at CrossFit and never coming back. And even the early adopters who did love it, they love that feeling of like, I'm going to be sick or I'm going to rip my hands. I'm so hardcore. What we found was that they turned out even after seven or eight months and they were not very open to coaching. So around uh, 2006, Nikki Violetti wrote this blog post or started her blog anyway. And Nikki and her husband, Rob, were the fourth CrossFit affiliate. And Nikki published this, this program called The On-Ramp. And it was this 21 day introduction to CrossFit at their gym. And what she had noticed after doing this for a couple of years was that the free trial joining a class led to high churn, led to high burnout, led to uh, premature injury rates. It led to people feeling like uncomfortable in joining their gym. And so they changed it to start with a consultative process and this 21 day on ramp. Now, in my first few months of owning a business, I had already read this and I thought, duh, Chris, this makes sense. The reason that your first CrossFitters at CrossFit Catalyst were so good was because they had like a year, two years, five years of personal training with you already. It made sense. The next wave to come in did not. And so I got to compare these two groups. I even shared this in a CrossFit Journal article way back in around, you know, 2010, 2011. It's called The Secrets of Sticking With It. You can Google that. And so what we started doing was just on ramping our clients. And what we found was that we were still getting a lot of people who were kind of early adopters. They'd heard of CrossFit, they were excited to try it. These were mostly military, firefighters, police, uh, service industry professionals with kind of a dangerous job. And so they came in and we'd say, okay, we wanna start you with on ramp to make sure that you know the movements. And they'd say, yeah, great. And then we would get 10 days in and they'd say, well, this doesn't look as fun as what I see on the website or, you know, the people over there in that class, they're like doing real CrossFit and I'm learning the front squat. You know, why, when can I join the group? And so after 21 days, it, it wasn't as appealing or as exciting to them. And so for that audience, the 21 day on ramp might have been a bit long. Later, we switched to 14 and then seven days and seven days for us was really that sweet spot. But a couple of things were happening at once. First, the early adopters were open to doing an on ramp, but 21 days was really just prolonging the thing that they were excited about. A shorter on ramp back then might have worked better. Today, now that 
all of the early adopters, especially in North America, have joined gyms and left or joined gyms and opened their own or joined gyms and become coaches. Now we're dealing with a different audience and a longer on-ramp might be better. So here's what the data says. If a client comes in, does a free trial and joins a group, they are likely to stick around your CrossFit affiliate or your kickboxing gym or your BJJ gym for around eight months. At the eight month point, they're generally gone. This could have something to do with churn. I mean, it's all churn, but it could have something to do with burnout. It could have something to do with injury, sadly, or it could just be that they don't understand how this is helping them achieve their goals. If a client is brought in through a consultative process and properly on-ramped, not only are they higher value, but they're likely to stick around for 14 months. Here's what's interesting about the 14 month mark. If a client makes it to the 14 month mark, they are twice as likely to stay for two years. And if we can keep a client for two years, we can change their lives because at the two year mark, they generally won't quit exercise, even if they quit your gym. They might go somewhere else. They might take up cycling or swimming instead, but they will not stop exercising. So two years is a great goal to hit for length of engagement with a client. And to do that, you have to have an on-ramp process. That's what the data supports. The second thing that an on-ramp process does is it increases the value of every client, not just because they stay longer, but because they're exposed to real coaching. Most on-ramps are done one-on-one now instead of as a group. And what that does is it allows the coach to form a one-on-one relationship with the client, make a better prescription about what they should do in the future, and also know enough about the client to tell coaches even in a group setting like hey you know watch out for mary she just doesn't have mobility in her left shoulder overhead squatting is really not a great idea for her yet okay so starting with that one-on-one on-ramping process is great how long should your on-ramp be it really depends where you are in the world if you're in western europe right now the data shows that the rapid growth of affiliates means that you're getting exposed to an audience of early adopters. So these people should have an on-ramp, but it should be shorter, probably five to 10 sessions. If you're in North America or a big city in Australia where CrossFit has been around for a while, you can have a longer on-ramp and you should. And so many cities in North America now report that their best retention comes from an on-ramp of 90 to 100 days. That means that the client journey is plotted out in advance for up to three months. That means that the client is doing some group training, but they start with one-on-one and then they slowly shift their delivery or or the way that they exercise from one-on-one to group. The last reason that I want to share to have an on-ramp is that a lot of people perceive group training as a massive barrier. They're new to exercise. They're going to openly share their goals with a stranger for the first time. They're going to expose themselves. They don't want to do that in front of a group. They're scared they're going to throw up. They're scared they're going to hurt themselves. They're scared they're going to fail. They're scared more than anything that they just can't do it. And so allowing them to have a one-on-one consultation with somebody who then says, Mary, don't worry, we're going to slowly ramp up. And then when you feel ready, you can try a group that is going to appeal to the high value client that a coaching business actually serves. The best part about that is that about 10% of your clients will stick with personal training more or less forever. These people would not have joined your gym if there was no on ramp and they just had to jump straight into group training. That means you're exposing people to fitness who are turned off by group training. On-ramp is not a barrier to entry. It's a barrier to exit. On-ramp keeps people around longer. This is data that was published way back around 2006 by Nikki Violetti. We've been collecting data for the last 10 years and the data strongly supports a consultative process, an on-ramp program usually done one by one and the length varies by where you live in the world and then goal reviews and follow-ups long-term. There are people out there who will say, you don't need an on-ramp, just put people into group. These people mean well, believe me. They just don't have the experience or the data that actually shows them that you need to have an on-ramp program to get people ready. Your on-ramp should be designed any way that you want it, but it should fulfill the goal of making people safe and comfortable before they join your group class. That will keep them around longer, long enough to meaningfully change their health. Hope this helps. Join GymOwnersUnited.com if you want to chat about this episode or any other, and we'll be happy to answer questions there.